All right, folks, here we are again, Mitch and Tony, DBA 3.0. We're going to do some questions and answers. And uh, got off to a little later start than we wanted to. Well, Why is that? We're here. <laughs> Played a really cool battle, right? Very cool battle. Yeah. Extremely cool. Well, we're not going to tell you guys what it is. We just have to wait for us to... Uh, Surprise. That's right. <laughs> You'll be pleasantly surprised. You will. So uh, it might take a few days to get that out. But, yeah. Um, anyways, it was a cool one. So we got done with that, so a little bit later on, later start than we wanted to. And uh, I guess technically that means that I win the toilet paper oh, roll, right? That's, or, what's, that's what's left of that big bundle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I give away that I won the battle. Uh, no, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, no uh, matter what, that's what's good. left over after I got done whooping your... Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, all right. White... <laughs> Not getting up in the corner. So we got a battle coming for you guys uh, soon. So um, got a cool uh, angle on it as well. Yeah. So you guys should be able to see some of the action a little bit differently. But, but, you like that angle but we promised you guys we we're going to do a uh, live session here with some questions. About a week ago, I decided to put out the question that uh, if there was anything you guys were interested in seeing us talk about within DBA 3.0 or anything that you might find confusing. Um, I don't know how that's possible to find anything in this rule set confusing. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. if you did post some questions, I uh, had some people chime in with some answers. So yep. uh, some questions for us. Um, answers, hopefully we'll have those. Hopefully. People came in with answers for us. What? Anyhow, so the first one comes uh, from, I hope I'm saying his name right. Should I say it? Yeah, you I do got, it. I have a better chance of getting you it right it. than you do, right? I'll talk about the subject. You do it. <laughs> okay, so the first question is from Ela Zendor, okay, and uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say he. Yeah, sounds good. He says uh, he's interested in, in using pikes, okay, how to, he has several questions about them. So the first thing he had is uh, how to play and win with pikes. Um, both of us enjoy pike arms, oh, right? I love them. And he specifically was talking about armies that have six or more pikes, so yes. we're not going to use the... Well, I didn't bring my Ptolemaics. Anyway, no, with a, with but I got my yeah. Macedonian now. Oh, there you go. Here we go, all right? Okay. So, um, something... Uh, well, there's a couple of videos where we did do pike armies, fights, and, uh, and one of them was the Picts against the Scots, and the Picts were quite successful in that. Ooh. And... Yay! And then there was um, the Scots Common against uh, the Norwegian, the Sea Fairies. And Scots pulled that one off with pipes. Um, but you gotta be creative. And then there's the one that I use this arm. Yeah, yeah, that's you. And I didn't win either. I guess I don't do well on video with pike farms. I, I happen to like pike armies a lot. Um, and uh, I'll talk about later about what I don't like about pike uh -huh. armies, which is probably what. Uh, Elot did not consider. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to add that on there is what we don't like or the weaknesses of pike armies. Well, when you do a pike army and you have six elements, yeah, you got to you got to be real creative. One of the best options that I like is hopefully we got a solid piece of terrain that you can base the edge of it on that could can kind of protect them. You'll be in trouble once you get past it, but Hopefully you can suck them in and then maybe fight the battle you want. Without so you're exploding. using a piece of terrain not in the center of the board, but yeah. as an anchor point. Yeah. Like where you can rotate like, around it. Yeah. Okay. You know. um, another option would be, let's say you don't have the option of, good, of bad terrain to slow your enemy down on one of the flanks. And maybe you're exposed a lot more where you got a, a big line. One of the tactics I'll do to extend because I will go four up front and put two in reserve out of the threat zone <laughs> so they don't get tied down for either when you go into combat or the enemy hits your line. Then that way, whatever those four guys... Okay, so if you've got, let's say they're fighting my Janissaries. So that way, when they when they end up hitting something, and you like the odds of whatever they're fighting, hopefully you get enough pips. Again, it always depends about pips. But hopefully, if you're advancing, 
hopefully you can keep them within striking distance behind, and then that way when they hit, you'll be able to react with bringing up support behind them and the key positions where you want to either have a decisive win or push up enough that you can use other elements to win the day, like a knight general, who's mostly a hairdresser. <laughs> well, yeah, usually. Well, at least we make fun of him when he's, the, yeah. uh, you know, with Alexander yeah. the hairdresser. So, so you want a second line, one within striking distance. So you want them within their move of the back of the first line, which in the case of solid elements would be two. Interesting is if you're using fast pikes. Oh, now that's you're better, yeah. now, yeah, oh. yeah, they're off. Fast now pike, fast pikes drilling. are really, really cool. I'm gonna The, re the rear rank on the pike in the set situation, if you're fighting a cavalry element, isn't going to be any useful. All they're going to do is like get themselves in a situation. What? Well, you don't. You're afraid. Oh. Of, you're afraid of my. Uh, okay. You're Bring afraid of my. Uh, Bring my my, my turks. turks. They have a terrible oh, win rate. Ah. Right? Okay. So if you're fighting a cavalry <laughs> element, okay, and you go into combat like this, the back rank doesn't help at all. It just ends up getting himself tied down because yeah. remember the threat zone goes through the first element. So that if you have, um, if you have the back rank in the threat zone and you're fighting an element that it doesn't even help you against, all you're doing is uh, limiting your flexibility. Yeah. So you so, don't want and another anti pike unit is Saloy. Saloy is only at two. They go and they don't. You know the pikes won't follow up if they push them. And Saloy will only tie, tie down that first guy. So you got, so something like that where if these Turks came up, you're wasting your time having a double, double pike against the Saloy or the cat. Right, all he's so doing is getting, getting only locked need that down. one guy to go up against the bow, you know. So you got to look at stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas if you keep them in a second line, you might, um, you know, if you have them all the way up front here and it's my move, I'm going to move him here where I can lock both the elements down and the back guy doesn't help him at all. Yep. If you keep him as a second line, now I'm guessing, well, if I go in, then when it's your turn, you could be like, you know what? We're going to throw him in against the bow where the, where the second rank does help him. So it, it gives you options. Options. You know? always good. Um, tactical flexibility. So. so here's another deal that I sometimes I do with the pipe. So in other words, just because they can back each other up, leave yourself the option of not having to do that uh, all the time. So, if you look at the uh, the picks in the Scott video, I actually you sometimes well the good thing about that army was it's fast pike. It's going to be a little bit harder to do with uh, the Macedonians because they're slower. They're more they just keep coming. But sometimes if you can trick somebody. And then, like putting, I'll put maybe a faster unit out on the flank to see if I can peel off one or two of his people to do something, or to at least face that threat, so they're not so wide. Because they can't ignore. You got like Cab, you got Saloy. They cannot ignore them getting on the flanks, or if they get behind them. That that's not where most people will not let that happen. No. They'll peel something off to do that. When I did the uh, when we did the pick, the picks and the scots, I had put Saloy off to the side, and and I had my pipe back far enough so that as Tony came back or came up, he had to split his line. Once he split his line, that's when I made my move with the pikes to start moving up because I was going to hit the one part of his line where we we're going to be eaving and I had light horse to protect the one flank 
it's all sometimes it was timing that one there's a lot of timing involved i i knew about the point where once he got to and that i was going to jump out at him but it doesn't always end that sometimes you know you got to be patient with Mike. you can't you can't force it. If you force it, yeah, don't just double them up and push yeah. forward. If you it's do not this and this come up, you're going to get over it. They're going to flank you, and then you're done. Especially with a, with a, a, an army that has six pike or more, obviously, yeah. you're giving up three units of frontage. You're giving up 120 millimeters yeah. of threat zone yep. that you could be exerting on the enemy, and you're just sitting back there and getting locked down. So, because basically, I'm not afraid to do four wide with two in reserve. I'm not afraid to do that. And then, and as long as I'm not facing an all blade army or something like that, then I'm, I'm good. And even then, maybe I might try and crunch up if I see where. Once you get, a, if you get high numbers, it's going to be a shove match anyway. So it's going to be a long drawn out thing if you get high numbers. So then, if it's drawn out, you have to rely on your side, your flank people to win the battle because it's not going to be one in the middle if they're both high numbers. Uh, but if you get somebody else with experience and they throw Saloy or Cav in their face, you know, then that takes away your double rank. There's even times where if I've had a pike army that I've had no advantage to uh, fight anybody in double rank, so everybody goes in single rank because there's nobody to double up against. So right. why? You're fighting a bunch of cavalry. Yeah. Cavalry They're fours Saloy. against cavalry and yeah. they don't get rear rank against there's, them. So there's no reason why to double them up then. So there's a lot... I'll take, I'll take it a step further. Yeah. Knights. Yeah. They only get a plus one for the for the other guy, right? Yeah. For, so they start as a four. They only get a plus one for the yeah. rear rank against knights. Against knights so you're only giving up a one. Yeah. And it would be beneficial to not go ahead and commit to having guys that are doubled up. Yeah. Where you can have that flexibility if that situation comes up. And, of course, the flexibility is great. And then you, it's still a game of, of chance yeah. because it's like, okay, all, all I need is a two, well, and you get a one. I got a one. I know, it's just part of the decision. game. <laughs> yeah, it's just part of the game, you know, but it, it does allow you some uh, flexibility. Flexibility is, is important, you know. So I personally value, um, like when I tend to play things, you probably already know this, um, I tend to, uh, we could talk that up a little bit more in the next, in the next one, but... I tend to not really have a plan. What? What do you mean you don't have? Like I like matchups, but I don't commit to a plan that's so much that's like this is how I have to win. Give yourself some options, tactical flexibility when you don't get the matchups, or more that you don't get the pips when you need them, or they're off by one bound or something like that. That yeah. you're not hung out to dry. Yeah. You know, give yourself some options. Big time. So um, I tend to set up balanced. And, um, Especially with pike armies, having a bit of flexibility. Pike armies, you got to have flexibility. Um, very seldom do the, unless you're able, like I say, if you're lucky and you get like a woods here and they have no bad going troops, and you're able to put everybody over here. If I, if I had to do that, if I knew they had nobody to go in the bad going, and I anchored my line, and then I put. Then what I would do is put all my fast troops on one flank as much as I could. And again, that's all about speed then. But I would still wait, maybe move some of them, do it in a couple, couple uh, clusters where you got some guys that are coming out front to entice them to come forward. And if he's too strong, don't be afraid to fall back. You know, draw them in closer, you know. It, it all depends on your opponent. Will they fall for it? Will they not? Pips. There's so much involved pips. in it. Pips. Pips are huge. So much involved pips in it. Pips are huge. But those are some hints that that I, I've used. Now, don't go crazy and do stuff like this or maybe have yeah. three guys in the front and three in the back. Like, you know, no. Because you do need what to. What you're trying to do is. Well, you know me. I'm, yeah. I, I'm all, I want everybody in one group if I can yeah. get away with it. Sometimes yeah. you just need to like. You okay. need to centralize them so they can go either, That's either right. way. That's right. You know, you gotta like you know, if you get a one pip, then now you gotta make one crucial decision. Am I going there? Am I going here? You know. Um, yeah. Okay. So the other question he had was, uh, so that's how to play and win. Okay. How to use a shorter main battle line? Okay. So the fact that you're giving up some frontage, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Like, well, some of those hints I've given you about trying to exert flank 
flank guys to make them turn part of their force. Hopefully have a solid piece of, of uh, real estate on your flank that they can't deal with. Or if they can, use the minimum amount to protect that flank and hopefully that gives them encouragement to get close enough so then you, like a rubber band, you just snap out at them hopefully and get enough enough push and kills in the first blow that it doesn't matter. How about the cool formation you can do with pikes? Cool formation? Yeah, cool formation with pikes. Alright, let's get these guys out of the way. Give me another, oh, you don't have them here handy. You got another Saloy? Uh, oh, we can use this guy. We can use this okay. guy. Okay, so this is a cool thing when you're fighting groups, and let's say you want to, um, I don't know if I can do this because I'm playing half ass words here sideways, but uh, a group, I'm, I'm huge on groups, folks, um, because you just, you're, you, you can move forward and make things happen when you have a bad uh, pip class. But let's say you've got, we'll do here a three quarter angle, hopefully you guys can see that. So we've got the, the famous anchor point that we're talking about, all right? And let's say you wanted to, um, okay, let's say you've got a, I'll have to re rotate the, the board, folks. But uh, let's say you wanted to advance this way, but the, say the, element, the enemy had like some cavalry, something that was really quick, you were worried about coming around this side. You don't have to create, a group isn't necessarily always like this. You can have a group. This guy tied into oh, here, yeah. this guy tied into here, the echelon thing. Yep, I, I've okay. done that too, yeah. And as you go forward, you may end up pushing these guys somewhere yeah. else, these guys exerting a vein, you yep. know, that kind of a thing. Yep. Or maybe keeping them together, rotating them. You can be okay. in this formation. Yeah. You have one guy side by side, one guy in the front, one guy in the back. Now, that's really your only options. You can only be like this or like this. As a group, I mean, you could still be like this, you're just not going to get any... Uh, you're not going to be able to move them together. Now, an alternative to that is, if you say you're facing like knights or cavalry or something that it can just eat up troops that are really, really fast and kind of wimpy against mounted in the open, take them and put them as points in the middle. So you take a pike guy here and you put a saloy next to him. You put a, put a pike in front and he's tied into this guy here with another guy in behind him. And you can do it auxilia the same way. They can be lined up in the back. Yeah. This guy can be lined up like this. This guy can be lined up like that. Okay. And what you just did is you just protected these two elements from the sort of tables. Yeah. Yep. You just protected oh. I'm getting dizzy, dude. Woo! Okay, you've just protected yeah. these two units that maybe if you're fighting knights are really unprotected in the open terrain. Okay, and there's still one group. You can move them all together. Yep. Okay, they're going to have to move at the speed of the pikemen, obviously. Yep. And they rotate, and and they, it's going to be a while because you're one, two, three, four, five. You're five wide, so yeah. you're going to move a lot. But now you've got these two elements that can uh, protection. that are protection on it. Okay, and the reason why they're one group is these two guys next to them making them a group. This guy also is a group. Yeah. Okay, this guy's here. And this guy is tied in to the front of this guy. Yep. Okay? So that becomes a group. That's just a little trick that allows you to yes. maybe protect your guys when you have to send them in harm's way, which we don't really want them to do. We want these little wimpy guys to be fighting in here. Yeah, but again, you're But sometimes you have to, you know? And it's kind of, if you're worried about one side, you're extending your line back a little bit. So then they don't, this, if you think you're going to win the battle by hitting this guy hitting first, at least he's up in the lead to do it. The exactly. bad thing about the Macedonians, they got such a high uh, aggression. Aggression. Well, they're always they get to react, so you do get to deploy them after the defender deploys. So at least you're in your rough your rough uh, deployment on how you want to attack or defend. Because sometimes you might want to wait see if you can draw them in. Mm -hmm. um, Any other tips or tricks you can think of? No, that I forgot about about that boat. I well, like I, that. I like that. That's, that's a real good one. Yeah. And, and this one I've had. I don't know why people get freaked out over this one. I've done this one a lot, and people don't know how to. Because after a while, like if they start to threaten this guy, I, I break off. 
and they still don't want to come in because he's oh, yeah. sitting there. Oh yeah, it's trouble. And then if it gets to a point where this this guy, then I break that one off and I'll keep pushing. But if you've got like a, this Saloy guy, and this Saloy is in the open, okay? He's only a two versus mount. Yep. Okay. If a knight wants to charge in here, he's going to be a one to a okay. two. Okay. He's going to be overlapped on this end yep. and overlapped on that end. Yep. Okay. The other thing you want to do is is you you don't move into that. Let him move into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Oh. Where does woods come from? Where, Where are the moves? Okay. So if you let him move, if you let him move up into you and make that decision, so you know, lock it, lock him down. Move so that and you can do it if you know that it's lined up. You can do it like that. Mm -hmm. And he's just in all kinds of bad decisions be, for the yeah. night. The I, can I go in there and get a kill? The now the reason why you let him do it in, in his bound is, let's say worst case scenario, he comes in and dies. Okay, let's go back to how we work here. Yeah. He dies. He advances. Okay. Now it's the, now it's these now it's the pikeman's turn. Well, now they can just they can ball. They can do all kinds of stuff. They can come in and bring a guy yeah. here. So they can close the yeah. door on him. Move. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So you know, you think you get, and the next thing you know is, hey, I got a quick kill on a Saloy. Yeah. Guess what, dude? We yeah. just took out your knight. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's a good way to protect guys and uh, how to use your maintain your flexibility with the pikes. Yep. Definitely. Um, because once they get into combat against someone, and they're locked down. Especially if they're fighting, say, like Blade or something like that. So no There's way, not a big difference. It's in not thing. a way, good situation. The Blade wins. It's a long, drawn out situation. The Blade's almost the same yeah. number as the Pike. Yep. And he tied up two units with using one. Yep. So, um, yeah, you can't expect. once you got to know once you hit, it's a shove match and nothing's going to happen. So whoever wins the flank, then. You better be you because otherwise you're gonna lose two guys. <laughs> okay, so what's the weak what's the weak point I'm gonna bring up about about uh piping? It, it, it'll be the if they get their door closed. Well, the slow, if they run up against Saloy tying down two guys, that's a bad thing too. Or cab. That's your final answer? Yeah. That's How about bullfire? Oh there is that too. They get mauled by bullfire. Yeah. Especially concentrated. Because they're only a three against foot. Yeah. This guy shooting is a two. You get another guy shooting at him, that's a two to two. That's really likely to do something bad to him. And let's say you're in a really cool formation like this. Like, you know, you're all yeah. all happy and it's like, man, I got this down. They're not going to be able to do anything on here. You get a couple of bow, got bow yeah. guys shooting at him. And you recoil this guy. Guess what happens? Now Oops. you're not in a group. Constitute or let's now. say he's here. I'm going to shoot at the Saloy and recoils him. Now you got separate guys. you got pip issues. If you do come under fire with a pipe, you got to make something happen. Yeah. You can't just sit there and, and wait for it to happen. It. You have to say, you know what? Screw them. Yeah. We're going to start eating them, making something a Take about. a couple shots and go. Because even though they're susceptible to, to Bowman, the Bowman's a two. This guy's a three, but he gets a th an extra three in rear ring against yeah. close combat. Once so he becomes there. a six to two. Yeah, once okay? you get there. The other thing is, is that if these guys are engaging someone, you can't. They're part of the combat. They can't. Uh, they can't pull them off. You know, and, and do something it's to them. So, um, so that's helpful. Um, anyhow, so um, yeah, pikes. We both like them. I like them. They're a challenge. They're they a different a way challenge. to play. Uh, you know, you have to you have to be patient. You have to come up. You have to be creative. Does Luke like pikes? Because he's not patient. I bet you. Yeah, he's not. I mean, if it is, it's like go go go. He probably likes fast pikes. <laughs> I do too, though, because they're. I like speed. Yeah. Speed is quick. You can react to stuff. These guys, you have to be really careful with solids because they're really slow to. To do anything with different than where they're going. Okay, the pikes. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that that helps you on pike armies and uh, that's the best. Check out those two battles. Um, the pikes did really good in that, and they're against. Uh, and those battles are here. on my YouTube channel. Yeah. So if you're not aware that I also have a YouTube channel. Just look up my name, Tony Aguilar. Just look it up on YouTube. You can even type in DBA. There's almost 100 videos out there yeah. of different battles that we've done, uh, terrain stuff on there like that. 
Uh, why am I not doing this on YouTube? Because I don't have enough subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to my DVA, to my to my YouTube channel, please do so. We're like 170 short. Once we do that, we can stream on there, and uh, you know we can get a, a, a bigger uh, footprint there for you go. people with DVA questions and so forth. So there you go. Um, and I think you can get a better resolution. I'm not sure what kind of resolution this is limited to. It might be limited to 720. But. Uh. Then you can see Mitch in all his glory, you know. So anyhow, um, please subscribe to my channel, and uh, that's where you're going to find the battle that uh, we just yes. played we'll yep. be on YouTube. Yep. Okay. So that's uh, Elon. Hopefully that was um, helps you. Yeah. Game so. like Pike armies. Yeah. I like them. Yeah, we pretty much like yeah. almost all armies. Yep. Yeah. Well, you don't like Warband. <laughs> what? You like Warband? Uh, fast Warband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, next question. All right. We're going to have to clean the board. It has nothing to do with this. Uh -huh. Okay. So, the next question was by Ridvan Sir Martinez. Okay. And his question was about defender lineup strategy. Oh, uh, yeah. And we just sure kind of played one of those battles, didn't, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get rid of these guys and, and use guys that would be really good for that. Defending? Yeah, yeah. I have an army that uh, tends to defend a lot. Okay. okay. And um, where do you want them to see? Where did their terrain go that they use? Ah, yes. There it is. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to use... I'm not going to put all 12 elements out here. You guys can get the idea of it. We're going to use my Sung Chinese. Sung of the South. Sung of the South. <laughs> they, are, they are the Sung of the South. Yes, you're right. No cotton picket in this battle. Nope, not nope. with these guys. Though. Not with them. Yeah, they're kind of rice pickers. There they are. Okay. Let's put some defenders here. Who do you want to? You want something lined up against them? Yeah. How about some of your bad guys? The. the I know. Guys. I know which ones. Oh, not that box. Yeah, you can use whoever. It's DBA. You can have. Uh, hey, you know. This guy anyway. was hiding. Why are you <laughs> hiding? That's the wrong place to hide. Yeah. <laughs> You hide there, you might have a brown out. Yeah, brown out. Okay. You just need a, any mounted or what? Yeah, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Give me some heavy foot. Couple, yeah, Bowman, heavy Couple. foot, something like that. Okay, so uh, Rick Vaughn wants to know um, what units you can, when you're defending, what units you can set up in front of others. Um, units to keep in reserve or plug lines. Best for placing range units or artillery. Artillery. My favorite. You like artillery yet, or you still need to work uh, on you? A little bit more. Uh, Not quite sold on it. He's gotten a few kills on the phone. So just a couple. Uh, just a couple, and you're kind of still trying to feel them out. Yeah. So, so um, as a defender, I love being the defender. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Why do I like being the defender? Well, because. You don't, even though you have to randomly roll for where the terrain is, and you may not get the terrain how you want it placed, you get to decide what kind of a battle you're not going to have. So in other words, let's say I've got uh, a, a, an army that has a lot of shooters. I can decide not to pick a bunch of forests yep. or woods and not have a bunch of line of sights that are blocked. Okay? So... It's not necessarily that you you know you don't want to fight at a big clusterfuck of terrain. Don't pick clusterfuck of terrain. You there know you it go. gives you a lot of you know it, you get to decide what kind of value you don't aren't, aren't going to have. So that's kind of nice. The other thing I'd like to do is I tend to uh, I mentioned this earlier. Um, I tend to not have a strategy. I might have mentioned that. Oh, and uh, it's not necessarily that I don't have a strategy. I have more. I'm more of a tactics guy than a strategy guy. Okay. And what I mean by that is. Um, have some ideas you want, but don't be so inflexible that it's like, okay, this is what I've got to do to win, because the other guy can see all the way through. Hey, if I don't know what I'm going to do, how are you going to tell me what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. Well, you might actually have a better clue than I do. Uh -huh. but anyhow, what I mean by that is I like to set up, if, when a defense, I like to set up balanced, okay? So if I've got an army, you know, with all things being equal, that has some heavy foot and some shooters, I tend to like to put the heavy foot in the middle and put the shooters on the end. Okay, because worst case scenario, 
if the battle starts developing, you've got time to move them towards the center or focus your attention in one direction or the other. If you've got all of shooters on one side and all the heavy foot on the other guy, the guy's like, hmm, those guys are really weak, let me go out for them, okay? Kind of gives it away and limits, limits your options, okay? Um, the other thing is, is an army like the Sung Chinese that have very little mounted, um, as a matter of fact, both iterations of them can only have two elements of mounting. One of them can have uh, the cab general and knight, and the other one can have the cab general and another cab. You almost, I almost always use these guys um, as whole blunders, okay? Because there's just not enough of them to be everywhere. Um, and you just, the main thing is you, you even though you can move them forward with the line, don't get in a situation where you engage the enemy, but you move your hope plunger so far forward, so when he comes forward, Can't now read. they're useless and locked down here. Okay? So um, you want to keep them in reserve back here. And even better, people will wonder, because then you have, you can do this, you can send it in one direction or the other, if they break through and contact them, you've got another guy that can help you beside them. You know, if you stay in groups, um, you have more options. You can still break off by yourself. Yep. Okay. But the main thing is, is keep them. I happen to like cavalry. Oh well, I happen to like cavalry and knights a lot as hole pluggers for different reasons. Okay. Cavalry because you can keep him so far back from the line, and he can move so far to either flank. It is so useful. Yep. I know you don't like them, but I like cavalry generals for that reason. Okay, because they're a four-four, so they're four against everything. So it's a reasonable good number. You got to roll really bad, yep. and the enemy's got to roll really good for them to get hosed. Okay, um, if it comes down to it, and they have the flexibility where they could be over here, they could be over here. Really useful, and they're really good hole pluggers. Knights, on the other hand, are great hole pluggers because. I don't really like knights. Okay. <laughs> They're a three, and it, once you get an overlap on them, and they drop to a two. Against foot. That's just bad. Yeah, against yeah. foot. Okay. Yeah. And we're not even talking about when you're facing crossbowmen or blades where a tie can, yeah. can do it. I'm yeah. talking about even against auxilia. Yeah. Okay. Even auxilia, Saloy. We've seen knights so, been taken yeah. out by Saloy many, many times. Yeah. I'm telling you what, that's epic when that happens. Okay? That's like the best thing you can do to somebody. It's like, oh, these guys don't have any respect. Oh, really? Well, why'd they hose you then? Okay? So, knights are great hole pluggers because if you use them as a hole plugger, and you use them as a hole plugger after your opponent has attacked you. So, in other words, this guy comes in here and say, um, attacks like this. No. Like this. You've got a second line in here. Hopefully that comes out okay. All right, cool. Um, and he dies, so if you've got a blade on a, on a crossbow. Yeah, stuff happens. You can't keep everybody off of everybody nope. else. He can't dies. The blade advances forward. Mm. Now it's my battle. Now I'll attack. Juicy. Now it's now I'll attack him, and have an overlap. So if you use the knights as a second line hole pluggers, then you're almost always going to get one overlap or Two, two overlaps. overlaps okay. even better. Um, so um, that's one thing I like to do a lot uh, for that. Um, if you've got an army like this one in particular, it is very, um, it's very defensive, and um, really ha has to play very defensively. So you need, you don't want to use its mobile elements. Put them on a flank, and then your opponent knows. Oh well, these guys move so. I can't do anything about it. If you find some way to tie these two units down, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and the same thing with uh, artillery. Artillery are very weak, so you want to keep um, you want to keep uh, guys that can um, protect them. Can, they can protect them. Okay. Now, the other thing that I'll mention about um, shooting elements is that certain units give bonuses to other shooting elements that you may not be aware of. One of them is solid blade. Against solid. Oh, bow. 
Is it all bow? crossbow. Any bow. Solid bow? Or is it just one bow? Any bow. Solid. Is it? Yes. Look it up. We don't want to tell Tanya. people wrong. We don't want to tell people wrong. So. I'm telling you. Okay, so we're going to. Because remember, you're mounted. Uh, well, it's late. This is time for you to be awake. I'm, yeah. You know. You're uh, solid uh, mounted, mounted uh, longbow guys. Solid bow and mutual edge contact with solid blades, and both of them are good going. So you don't want them in a uh, in a rocky. You're not going to get any of that. Yeah. Okay? They both have to be good going. And it's solid blade, not solid spear. Solid blade yep. versus solid bows. And bows means they could be long bows. They could be regular bows. Mounted bows. They could be um, as long as they're solid. Ones. Solid. Yep. Okay, they have to be solid. solid. That's right. Solid on four solid. fingers on a stand. Yep. Or eight. Yeah, eight. Okay, because yep. the uh, the double depth ones. Yeah. The deep bows are also count. Okay. Yep. So solid bow. It could be crossbow, longbow, or just a regular bow. Okay, as long as they're solid and there's a solid blade, not fast blade, solid blade. Gives them a um, plus against. Gives other them a plus, plus one, so they're normally two in close other, combat. In close foot. combat. In close combat against other foot. Okay, and um, so th these guys become a three. Okay, so that gives them a bonus for that. Um, so that's handy. So what I like to do is would the eight bow be a four then? They would be. So they would be a 4 4 then. Mm -hmm. I actually brought that up before I brought, built my Burgundian army. Uh -huh. I still don't like those deep bows. <laughs> they, they could be uh, catastrophic. Because the first one counts as two. Yeah, so deep bows. Um, I know you didn't ask about deep bows. Uh, hey, this is a freebie. Yeah. Uh, no extra charge. So the thing about deep bows is they're plus one. As long as they're in good going, they're, they're an extra plus one in close combat it's other against foot. other foot. Okay, so uh, if this was a well, I didn't bring them today. If this was a hey, look, deep bow. Um, if this was a deep bow, I think they're on they're forty deep, right? Yeah. Okay, just pretend they're forty deep. Yeah. They would um, they'd get a plus one. So instead of being two in close combat, they would actually be a th they would actually be a three if they have a blade next to them. That would bump them up to a four. But if they die, they the first one counts as two elements eliminated. So that's they're actually a, a nice trade-off. What you don't want to do is get into a shooting war with them. Because they shoot the same as a regular bow. They still shoot as a two. So don't get in a shooting war with these guys. By all means, do not put them in front of artillery <laughs> unless you're facing me, because I'll be Woo. like the entire game that will be my that will be my way to play them. The jewel you know? napkin. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which is also, when I play my Burgundians that have those guys, the whole game I'm like, you're not going to get one of those as a kill. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, they're, they're useful, but they're all, but don't get into a shooting war with them because they shoot the same as a regular bow. They'll be two to two at each other, which is easy to double. Yeah. And if they get doubled, then boom, the first guy actually counts as two elements lost. Two guns. Okay. Uh, artillery. Artillery, I love artillery, okay? Because even though they're an element that costs an extra pip to move, which would basically mean I wouldn't like them because I don't, I like to be real cheap with my pips, yep. okay? So if I have to move them, they cost two pips. If you put them somewhere, they can be doing their job and you don't spend any pips on them, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is, their job is to shoot at people. And if you get them in the right place, and they're five base widths away, you don't have to spend another pip on them. You yep. just roll dice and roll dice and roll dice. So, um, generally, they wear better on uh, a flank. Yep. Okay? Because you can put them at an angle where, remember, their shooting arc is, is one base width to each side, and then out five. You got a five marker? Okay, so they shoot out sideways like this, out to five, okay? So if you got a guy that's out here, he's not gonna get shot at until you, you know, rotate him or whatever, okay? Um, if, you, if you're attacking the formation head on, the most you're gonna get options to shoot is one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, okay? Generally, especially if you're lined up on somebody. You're only gonna get the guy in the front, and one guy inside options. You set up at an angle like this, 
all of a sudden you can shoot at everyone. Because with your arc being like this, basically equivalent, equivalent, equivalent to the front of these elements, even if they weren't there, okay? you're going to be able to shoot at him, you're going to be able to shoot at him, or him, or him. Okay? Because the arc goes all the way here. So putting him on the edge and rotating is okay. It's also okay to start the game. You don't have to be facing exactly towards your enemy. You could be like, let's say you've got all your guys set up. Put them all together. The like, obviously, you've got to be in your setup area. But you can way. set them up like this. If you know he's going to come at you, um, put them at an angle and start getting some shots in. You know when you can. Um, however, things to keep in mind: they can only shoot when it's your turn. When they, you they don't move them, and you didn't move. They don't move, and it's your turn. So you need to plan a little bit. They they're kind of. Uh, um, they're kind of lumbering, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So you've got to plan for a little bit of, of, the, of them. So um, I, I love putting, I love using artillery aggressively. Mm -hmm. You have a group, and say you're trying to do X, Y, Z, and I go put my artillery. Obviously, I'm not putting them by myself. I'm putting them, hopefully, with some protectors. But to put them in a position where. I'm going to get a shot at either this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy when my bound comes again after I'm moved. So let's say you don't roll a four. I'm going to shoot at one of the guys. Okay? So I like putting them somewhere where they can exert their... The threat zone of the artillery is kind of like their shooting range. You put them somewhere that you're going to be able to make somebody's life miserable. Okay? And just park them there and start raining a bunch of plus fours on them. Okay? Eventually, something's going to, you're going to hit the jackpot. Somebody. Eventually. So, you know, nice. you put somebody like that, you have them exert a lot of elements, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, pressure <laughs> pressure points, and then the guy ends up rolling a bunch of ones and twos for pips. Makes his life miserable. Oh, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you, you can't, uh, <laughs> you can't just do that all, you know, you can't just sit there and do that. You've got to, you know, you, you've got to advance and, and take care of the artillery, so. Um, that's when, um, but that's one thing that's really good for the artillery. Usually they work better on the flanks, but again, I'm going to say something with this army in particular. These guys can actually even have two artillery pieces. Uh, I tend to not put them on the flanks with them. And uh, the reason why is because they have such few units that are mobile that I really can't afford to set someone up initially over here on the flank of them to protect them. So I tend to put them in the middle. Um, anyhow, um, and and there's there's pros and cons of, of putting them together or not. So, but that could be another subject all, all together in our tour, so. And a lot depends on on who sets up first. You know, sometimes if you if if you get a low number, there's a lot of, like uh, the Jin army has a aggression three year zero, right? Yeah. So most time he is going to deploy first. High aggression armies are going to deploy second. So usually they're going to be able to react. To yeah. So with two artillery pieces with these guys, I tend to not put them together. No yeah. way. You know, I've got one guy over here, one guy over here. What do you want to do? Yeah. Now of course that kind of hinders me because I've got to spend an extra pip in two different places to move them around. But if you put them together, they can be really isolated. There's not a whole lot of armies that have two artilleries. But yeah, and you can do the same thing. You can be talking about, say, you know, uh, two bows and artillery. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because it's really easy to isolate them. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, he throws the heavy foot over here and I've got nowhere to react to him. So give yourself options. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket and, um, and have a flexible battle plan. Um, the other thing is, is that if you put terrain down, one thing that's really good for a shooting army is to put enclosures, marshes, yeah. anything like that that you could shoot over. Yep. When you're in a marsh, for instance, if, even if you have a toehold, you can't shoot out. Yet you can be shot at, but nothing says you can't just be on the other side of it and shoot over. So these are elements that are it's, really it's good. Really good for blocking solid troops because then it takes them a long time right. to get across. Yeah. So Or against mounted so they can't come at you. Exactly. And if they're in this range, especially artillery, that's great. If not, you have this great area. No mounted guys can mess with them. Any solid foot will take forever to get across. 
you know, it's not a bad deal. Just don't put yourself in a situation where it's like, okay, once I'm done dealing with this threat, I want to advance forward with the artillery and play. Because if you've got a march in front of you, that's going to happen. That's not going to happen. Okay, so. Or it's going to happen really slow. A battle will be done before they get around it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, well, they can't go in by going at all. But I mean, going around it. Oh, yeah, going around it. Yeah. Yeah. That's. It's going to. One way or another, the battle will be done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're so, like, hey, we won, or, oh, we missed it. Um, and bad going, if that was bad going, let's say this was woods instead. Okay. It's great to use this. As, it's great to use that as an anchor point. Anchor point. You know, uh, there you might want to put. You're not going to put artillery here as in the woods. As long as you know they don't have Saloy or something, because you don't have any bad going troops, right? Except this for army? Bo. Yeah. Uh, I could give up. Yeah. You don't really want Saloy. Yeah. I mean, Bo really aren't bad going troops. There are guys that if they get caught in the woods, it's not the end of the world. But if you if you notice that they don't have any Saloy or auxilia then it's not a bad deal to set up next to it. Correct. Because again, no mounted troops, well, any solid troops. I mean, troops, if the woods is back here where you can set up next to it. Yeah. yeah. And you can always put a guy here on your flank. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. later, move him up or, you know, yeah. out or something like that, you know. Because um, if it is a Saloy and you double him, he'll flee. Yeah, bow are okay in woods because uh, as long as some part of them can shoot out, you can still engage your uh, the guys with bow fire. Yeah. So that's uh, that's not bad. But generally, as a defender, because you have to place first, I tend to want to place even. So if you've got, say, if you've got four elements of heavy foot, you got some heavy foot. Put them in the middle. Put put your guys on the on the flank. You got artillery. Put them. I've even done this. I've even put artillery in the second rank. Now I've done it like this so that if I have to move forward. Like I find out, oh, well, you, maybe you put some bow over here to try to overwhelm this guy. And then I roll big. I'll get this guy out of the way. He moves forward into a position like this and says, hey, how about those apples? Okay, so um, leave yourself some flexibility, you know, because um, just because you can set up all the way across doesn't mean you have to. Great. Okay? So um, anyhow, so that is the defender lineup strategy. And um, from Ridvon. So hopefully that was helpful for you, yeah, Ridvon. So uh, in the meantime, looks like uh, Kevin Brownell has been uh, chiming in with some questions. And um, the, uh, let's see, your question is uh, Kevin, I think you're out in Arizona. Uh, do you know um, who's our buddy? Jim, right? Yeah. Jim. Um, it's late, I can't think anymore. Hey, guess what? What? I still got his card. From Do you? Him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, look it up. Yeah, Jim uh, came down to Florida and uh, he drove straight through and came to uh, Huracan last year. Yeah. Jim Cheney. Cheney. Yep. Cheney. Jim yep. Cheney's in, I don't know where in Arizona. There it is. Cheney's Jim Cheney. Peoria. Yeah, so yep. uh, look him up. He's a hell of a guy. Yep. So, anyway, anyhow. Um, yeah, he's from Arizona as well. Yeah. So I think you had a question here. I think house rule, like terrain, can touch. Light horse can move twice. Uh, is, is it all right to say light infantry instead of soloi? Yeah, light infantry actually should be auxilia. Auxilia should have been called uh, light infantry. Skirmishers. Or even medium infantry. So they should have been called skirmishers from the get go. Everybody knows what skirmishers are. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I brought that up in one of my questions last week. Is uh, I had some guy from Greece and he was telling me I was pronouncing <laughs> Saloy wrong, which is you know, hey, I'm not responsible if you're using a different characters in your language for me to be able to spell it right. <laughs> but I, I I try to pronounce things correctly. Uh, you know, I, I speak two languages and, and pretend to speak several <laughs> other ones, especially when I'm playing games. But, um, but yeah, I said, well, if I pronounce it the way you want me to pronounce it, I'm going to have to, nobody's going to know what yeah. I'm saying for, uh, for a Saloy. But they should have been called skirmishers from the get go. Uh, yes, I don't like the Saloy either. Um, I, I think it's silly. Skirmishers would be easy. Skirmishers are easy, yeah. They're, um, they still Everybody have skirmishers uh, yeah. nowadays. Yeah. 
you know. Everybody knows who it is. Yeah, and actually when I started playing DBA, I heard a lot of people were calling them uh, Pisolis. So yeah. Really, really yeah. demented ways of, of pronouncing the P, and we know damn well the P doesn't get pronounced. <laughs> so, um, I need to go to my psychiatrist, psychiatrist <laughs> or something. But uh, Already? Yes, I wish they had been. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they had been, it's that time of the month. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, I wish they had been called something else. And I wish auxilia weren't auxilia. I wish they were light infantry yeah. and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, but I didn't write the rules or um, it would have been organized a little bit better. Can't guarantee they'd be any better because the rules I think are really good. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're genius. I just wish they were explained better so everybody could enjoy how rich they are, um, which is why we're doing these damn videos to begin with. Yep. Well, we'd still be filming our battles because that's oh, yeah. honestly that's a lot of fun. But um, if you guys have any more questions, um, we're going to try to do this at least bi weekly. Um, I'll let you guys know when I'm doing one and you guys can chime in what, what's interesting. Because it's not so much what we find interesting. You might, you guys might be finding things that are really basic that I think are, are really, really simple that aren't. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say the R word, but maybe <laughs> rivers. Um, uh, rivers are a show in and of themselves. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, they're interesting, and there's a lot of things that I that we think that that are really good in the game, from a play balance perspective. But aren't really. I mean, it is a game. So, um, we want to, um, th there's things that are in the game, like for instance, the littoral landings, that, that wouldn't happen within the scope of a battle, right. and, and they're kind of dumbed down and stupid, or maybe taking over a built up area, but from a play balance standpoint, as far as the game, they're perfectly fine, yeah. and they add another element, and also another flank, so you're not just constantly fighting straight across yeah. this, you can fight asymmetrically. There you go. So. Um, they they are um, there's there's a lot of little wrinkles so we're definitely going to try to tackle some of those things that you guys might um, be find. interested in. Yeah, so I'll be trying to give you guys a week's notice, and um, hopefully we won't have to cancel. No, we've got uh, good morning, Neil. Neil's out in the UK, I believe. Morning, guys. So he's over. Tea time. Oh yeah, no, no, no. He's waking up like when I wake up. up. I wake up at five a.m. every morning. He's, uh, he's starting his. It's tea. quarter to midnight here, and I'm still planning on waking up at five. It's tea, t tea time. You know I'm waking up at five. Oh right? yeah, sure. Not me. <laughs> I gotta get some painting done. I haven't done any painting in yeah, all week. Does that, and then I stay up later yet. Yeah, you'll, you'll be up at like three in the morning. Too, yeah. <laughs> hey, when I wake up, I'll tell. I will call you to tell you to go to yeah. bed. <laughs> Bed, I, I do all okay. my best painting between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. So there you go. I'll get up, maybe get a couple of my uh, my my new figures painted before uh, the girls wake up. Don't wake them up. Yeah, I get sidetracked. So. Yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, if you guys, I'm trying to give you guys like a, a week's notice so you can have time to get your questions in and uh, anything that uh, you might find troubling or confusing. So. Hopefully this helps. Yeah, hopefully this helps. If it doesn't help, it's still fun to do. Yeah. Even though I'm stuck doing it with this guy. Uh, yeah. You know, so. Uh, again. But anyhow, uh, I know some of you guys are uh, with the situation right now is pretty um, pretty bored at home. Yeah. And doing stuff. Uh, yeah. We tend to be we're real busy, you know, for the time being. So, yeah. Um, so for me, it's like I'm doing all my hobby stuff on the weekend. So. I'm looking forward to doing that, so uh, hopefully work on some more on the project. But anyhow, we will be trying to do these at least every other week, and uh, hopefully you guys found this useful. So and entertaining, uh, yeah, and entertaining. <laughs> well, we're entertained. I don't, yeah, I, yeah. I enjoyed you talking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but anyhow, this is uh, DBA 3.0. Thank you. Um, Ela and Ridvan for your questions and um, please keep send us some more. Yeah, keep, keep, on keep them coming. All right. And um, like I said, we just filmed the battle earlier today. Yep. Or earlier this evening. Yeah. And um, you wanted to film it in the evening just so that you'd have an advantage, advantage to win, right? This is why we do this at night. See how'd that work out? Get for that you? advantage. We don't spoil it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, but <clears throat> we're not going to spoil it. But um, 
I get to take this roll home. This is all that's left. Yeah, so I, I get to take this home. Okay, so. <laughs> it's gonna take me. Uh, it's gonna take me a few days to get it up there. So uh, out of a twenty-four pack. Out of a twenty-four pack. That's all. That's left, yeah. <laughs> how does that? How does my favorite saying go? This, this is our. I'm gonna wipe the floor with your ass and then kick it for not getting up in there the corner. There you go. See. <laughs> This is how we fight for toilet paper, right on the board. <laughs> so anyhow, there's more goodness to come. We have a hell of a time playing this. So, oh, um, hopefully you guys found this entertaining. Okay. So for those of you in... Uh, England, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> for those of you uh, in the time machine known as Australia, you're watching it yesterday or, or in the future. Oh. It's, I think it's in the future and then upside down, right? Could be. What the Michael? Uh, what's that guy's name? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> and yeah. for those of you in the Eastern Standard Zone, good night. Good night, folks. <laughs> bye bye.